including the public? Yes, sir. Wonderful. All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this special committee of the whole. Um, thank you all for coming. Um, let's go ahead and do roll call. Trustee Bulma? Here. Trustee Henderson? Here. Trustee Hoffman? Here. Trustee Eno? Here. Trustee Moreno? Here. Trustee Vela? Here. Trustee Veres? Here. Thank you. Thank you so much. At this point, I would appreciate if our newest trustee, uh, Trustee Eno, would uh, lead us in the flag salute. Can do. Wherever there's a flag. Uh, oh, there's the flag. Uh, I pledge allegiance. To the flag uh, of the United, United States, States of America. America. And, and to, the to the republic for which it stands. And one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much, Tristy Eno. Uh, let's go ahead and see if there's any public comment request to address the Board of Trustees on Committee of the Whole agenda items. No public speakers, sir. All righty. Okay, let's go on to item C. Um, Join us today is uh, the Chancellor as well as Dr. Ruben Smith presenting on the joint occupancy ground lease for 10100 Jefferson Boulevard. Uh, Dr. Smith and Chancellor, take it away. Uh, thank you very much, um, Trustee Vela. Um, is it possible for us to um, um, revise the agenda for Southwest College item to go first? Are there any objections? No. Hearing none, let's go ahead and move the uh, Southwest College Student Union Building College Requested Scope of Work to uh, on top of item C. Thank you so much. Uh, go ahead, Dr. Smith. Thank you very much. Uh, and again, thank you, Trustee Vela, um, members of the board, chancellor, colleagues, and members of the public. Uh, it is uh, really wonderful to be here with you today. We have uh, uh, Interim Vice President Valencia Moffitt with us today uh, to present to the community of a whole um, a, a, a potential change order for the LA Southwest College Student Union. And now we'll turn it over to Ms. Moffitt. Thank you, uh, Vice Chancellor Smith. Good afternoon, Chancellor Rodriguez, board president, officers and trustees. I am Valencia Moffitt, as Dr. Smith mentioned, and I am the interim vice president of administrative services here at Los Angeles Southwest College. Today, I am presenting on behalf of the college and our president, Dr. Sahar Awan. Thank you for the opportunity to present to this committee the requested changes associated with the student union building at LASC. The following slides will provide you a brief description of the project to include information regarding the project as well as the requested changes. Next slide, please. And next slide. Um, throughout the presentation, we'll also discuss uh, or we'll show a rendering of the requested changes that we'd like to present. As you know, a student union building is essential to the overall goals of the district and Los Angeles Southwest College to modernize the campus-wide services, to provide a study in social spaces on the campus, and to enhance the overall social services on our campuses. It will provide a place for our students to dine and to ultimately become the new social hub uh, for our students at Los Angeles Southwest College. Last December, as you may know, the, as you know, the college broke ground on our new two-story student union building and the scope of work um, includes all the associated utilities, hardscape and landscape surrounding the building. In addition, the scope includes the site accessibility improvements along the path of travel to our existing parking and existing bus stops. Next slide, please. The contractor on this site is W.E. O'Neill and HGA. The notice to proceed was uh, issued over November 15th, 2021, and the target completion date for this project is in fall of 2023. The total contract amount is $42.7 million. The college is requesting a change to add 
an operational glass wall that will open the indoor dining area to the outside. Also to uh, in efforts to maintain a food safe environment in the server cafe to add an automatic doors at the servery and add glass doors uh, to the storefront at the cafe. Next slide, please. I just talked about this, uh, the requested change is for the indoor um, dining connection change for the open dining area, as well as an operable glass wall and also to the storefront. Next slide, please. This, is, this slide shows a rendering of the existing design of the student union building, the beautiful building. Next slide, please. This slide shows the requested change as shown in the picture with the blue perforated lines. Um, and that is to add automatic sliders at the servery area. This is a LA, uh, Los Angeles Department of Health requirement for indoor outdoor dining. Next slide, please. This request or this slide shows the rendering of uh, to add the glass storefront at the cafe. And again, another LA department requirement for indoor outdoor dining. This glazing enclosure at the cafe will order. This is where people or students and staff can order and pick up uh, at the window. Next slide, please. The benefits of this change will allow us to expand the capacity of the student union building. It supports sustainability by offering utility savings. Uh, utility savings will be realized by the cross breeze and the natural lighting that will shine through uh, the building. It provides a welcoming environment for the campus community. And finally, the change aligns with our master plan and the pedestrian walkway by creating synergy between Cougar Walk, which we'll show on the next slide, and the outdoor uh, student space. Next slide, please. As you can see on this slide, it shows the connectivity to the uh, Cougar Walk. And this change will, will open the indoor dining area to the outside. As written on a slide, it creates an outdoor dining al fresco experience for the, the students uh, and those dining in that area. It promotes a COVID-friendly eating environment. As, and as mentioned in the previous slide, this slide also shows the connection to our main uh, walkway, the Cougar walkway. Next slide. This slide shows a rendering of the requested change. And as you'll see, again, the area shows in, in blue shows the outdoor indoor uh, dining experience and how this, the doors will open and close similar to um, what's at Los Angeles Trade Tech College, our colleagues out there in that, that beautiful uh, building in the Culinary Institute. Next slide, please. The rough order estimate is uh, totals $368,000 um, with the indoor and outdoor dining design costs with an estimate of $118,000 and the indoor and outdoor dining change construction cost of about $250,000, again, for a total of $368,810. Um, I'd just like to point out that the college is very appreciative um, of the new student union building, and we hope that um, the, this committee will approve the changes um, that are requested for the indoor-outdoor uh, dining doors. Any questions? Any questions from our trustees? I have a quick question. Uh, President Buena. Since this is a committee of the whole, is this just an informative or? May I respond? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, um, this is um, um, continuing with our commitment to bring any owner driven changes, requested changes by the college um, to either FEMPOC or the committee of the whole for review. Um, so we, there's no action needed. Uh, this, uh, we will proceed with an item for recommendation on the June 1st uh, board agenda, but we wanted to present this to you as an owner-driven change um, for, uh, for assessment and consideration. 
Sorry, my only confusion was the request for approval. Ah. Uh, Apologies. mistake. Sorry about that. I right. said Sorry, maybe that was a test if we're paying attention. We're paying attention. <laughs> uh, trust, Trustee Vela, can I ask a question? Absolutely, Trustee Vela, go ahead. Um, you know, the, uh, I don't have a problem with the request as presented. I think they're, they almost feel like they should be like sort of standard design features. Um, you know, I think a lot of them sort of reflect what's at Trade Tech and maybe even pieces of a few other campuses. But curious why this wasn't part of the original design. I can answer that question. I think that there was a, um, a change in what the Department of Health was allowing. And with that change, we decided to present a change order for the um, for the additional doors. But it is something that the college had wanted for years, from my understanding. Um, but with the change in the or the approval orders with the Department of Health, that is allowing us to bring it back for a design change. No, I think what I'm trying to say is it, it, the, the design looks similar to what we have at other places. So if they were able to do it, why couldn't we do it at the front end? Or am I wrong? Am I wrong? I mean, Valencia, this may be a harder question for you to answer because you may be less familiar sure. with the other buildings. Sure. But from from other examples, and maybe Dr. Smith, this is maybe a question for you, but this this does look like features that we have at several other facilities. And I'm just wondering why we can't we couldn't have put it in at the very front end um, or even added as sort of design standards from here forward. Yeah, that's a great question. Unfortunately, sometimes the challenges are um, when you when you submit a review to the LA Health Department, who's the reviewer? And so when you you have a reviewer um, who interprets the space uh, in a certain way and the amount of traffic different than other reviewers, we have similar challenges with DSA. And so this is one where, um, I, I, from what I understand, it was initially something that the college wanted, health department didn't allow it. So we had to modify that design not to include it within, a, you know, there had been, um, uh, uh, some considerations for, you know, allowing for us to have that change and the college jumped on it and said, hey, we'd like to see that happen. So um, I can look further into it, but I, I'm not sure why, you know, a couple of others were allowed and, and the Southwest design was not. Right. Okay. Appreciate that. I, like I said, I don't have a problem. It looks similar to what we have in a few other places, but like it, it does cost you money if you don't have it in the front end to do the change order later. So um, from an efficiency standpoint, if, if this is, it, it's, it looks good. It, it actually is sort of a popular element. Um, and if we can sort of build this in, uh, not have this health department frustration or DSA frustration and just have it be a standard feature, it would help us in the future as we build these kinds of similar types of doors and entry spaces. Definitely noted. We'll, we'll note that. I have a question. Oh, go ahead, uh, Trustee Monero. Uh, real quickly, uh, just uh, I, maybe I may have missed it. What is the size of that student uh, union building anyway? And did it replace an existing building? I don't remember that. It, the size is approximately um, 20,000 square feet. Am I correct, Dr. Smith, um, of the building? Yes. And it is being built in between. I don't believe we tore down a building here, but it is built in when you're entering the Western entrance um, of Southwest College. So right in front of, near, between the police station and the um, student services building. I see, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Okay, uh, Dr. Smith? Thank you. I uh, appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, Ms. Moffitt, we appreciate the, <clears throat> the detailed report uh, and opportunity. I'll connect with you uh, on next steps. Um, our next item, um, can we go to item two, Trustee Bell? Is that fine? Yeah, let's go over to uh, item two. Okay, so item two is the uh, joint, joint occupancy ground lease uh, for 10100 Jefferson. I'm pleased to introduce this item. Uh, under the board's direction, uh, the district issued a request for proposals uh, for a joint occupancy lease providing the mixed use development of approximately 13.6 acres of district owned real property, um, commonly known as 10100 Jefferson Boulevard located in Culver City. As a part of the process, <clears throat> today you will hear a presentation from four firms that responded to the RFP. Each firm will have 15 minutes to present the following information. Uh, the development uh, proposal for the physical uh, improvement of the space, 
which could include uh, any on-site improvements, uh, buildings or whatnot, uh, and a strategy for collaborating with the district to enhance student success as outlined in their proposals. No other information concerning the proposals will be presented at today's meeting, nor will any formal action regarding selection be taken at today's meeting. However, the board will have an opportunity to ask clarifying questions regarding uh, any of the proposers' presentations materials. Staff will, um, will, will bring <clears throat> uh, board action in a subsequent meeting scheduled for June 1st of right now tentatively uh, with a recommendation uh, for, uh, for review based on the review of the proposer's financial offer uh, and, uh, and their terms, uh, the project vision and the development programs, uh, the team's qualifications, the organization of the overall proposal, and the evaluation panel's assessment. At that time, the board may approve uh, the staff recommendations or reject the proposals. So first up, um, we are going to have uh, Lincoln Property Companies West um, give a brief presentation. I'll turn it over to uh, LPC West. Thank you so much uh, and, and good morning, uh, Chancellor, good morning officers, trustees, board members, and members of the public. Uh, my name is Rob Kane. I'm executive vice president for uh, Lincoln Property Company. Uh, I run our Los Angeles market. I have responsibility for everything that we're doing here locally. Um, and we're really pleased and excited to be able to present to you this morning. Um, this is a long time in the making. Um, we have spent a tremendous amount of time uh, working on uh, our plans, which we're excited to, to show you today. Um, and we're really excited about the opportunity to create a long-term partnership um, with the school um, and uh, really excited to really bring a unique uh, insight into the site and also, um, I think, extensive uh, experience in working uh, locally uh, ar around the project site. So we really like to think that we bring a lot of horsepower uh, to this project. Uh, we've recently completed or in the process of completing more than $2 billion worth of, uh, worth of projects within two and a half miles of the project site. So um, this is a, a truly a, a, what we consider to be a, a home game for us. Culver City is a, a market that we are very experienced in and have had a lot of success in. And so as we think about um, how to really create the most successful project, one that creates an absolute win for the school, for the students, um, and, for, um, and for the community, um, we were able to really take a very wide uh, approach. We're not publicly traded. We don't have a specific strategy. We're active in all product types. And so we were able to, to really um, take a, a very wide ranging approach to what is the highest and best use of the land? What is the most compatible use with the school? How do we do this in a way that really integrates a very high class project uh, into, into the school's campus that creates opportunities for job creation for the students, apprenticeship programs for the students, and how do we really make this an attractive feature for the school to be able to attract best-in-class uh, talent uh, to the school, and how do we really create these great synergies? Um, obviously, this is a rapidly changing time um, coming out of COVID. Um, certainly, there is you know, volatility in the capital markets. The property markets are changing dramatically. And, and so we, we really are excited to be able to put a, a campus plan together that um, really what we see caters towards where the demand is, technology, and potentially some life science as well, which is a, which is a, a product type that we're starting to see um, emerging in, in parts of Culver City. And these are product types that we've invested in over $5 billion on the West Coast over the last three years. So these are product types that we know extremely well and have you know, delivered a number of very high quality campuses um, with these types of uses. So really, as we think about it, the priorities that we, that we brought into to this process, and, and clearly this is something that we're really excited to have much more collaboration with the school around goals and visions. But from our deep understanding of what we think the priorities are for, um, for the school, we really wanted to carefully calibrate a campus that that really seems uh, and finesses its way into the existing um, into the existing campus um, in a very carefully calibrated way. Um, and so, uh, Ashley, if you go to the site plan, yeah. So what we've what we've really looked at is a series of adaptable buildings 
Um, these would be, you know, very high quality class A, um, a creative office and potentially lab and life science buildings um, that are really meant to create best in class companies to come to this, to this campus. Um, as you can see, we've really worked hard to integrate these buildings into, um, into, the, into the campus feel, um, working within the, the natural landscape and the topography, how the buildings configure, how do we create great spaces within the buildings, how do we effectively park it, also make sure that we've designed a plan that we believe gives us the, um, the best opportunity to secure entitlements as quickly as, as, as possible um, so that we can deliver this project into the market as quickly as possible. And then really, you know, working on defining those synergies. Um, you know, we think these are the types of buildings that will attract best in class companies um, from a wide range of different industries. And again, that's where we see some really great apprenticeship programs for the students, job creation, collaboration with these companies in the school. And we think there's some really op uh, unique opportunities there uh, for the school to be able to take advantage of within this much broader campus setting. So um, what I'd love to do is to be able to pass it over to Ashley Richardson. Ashley is with Ehrlich uh, Architects. They're obviously a Culver City based architect um, that have a tremendous amount of uh, experience working on very high, high quality products in Culver City. Um, Ashley, do you want to walk through the, the master plan in a little bit more detail? Yes. Thank you, Rob. And thanks, everyone. Um, so I will speak a bit. So let me make sure my page forward is working. Um, so yes, we're thrilled to present this concept and really treating this as uh, your extended campus and how this can uh, be a very porous solution that acts as an extension to the West Campus. Um, and one of the We've done that through several ways. Rob spoke to the site orientation, really taking advantage of the beautiful site and the massing response to that by stepping down the hill. And then creating a new iconic campus gateway where the, the new campus building um, is located immediately at the corner of Jefferson and College to really be a sort of a new entry point into campus. Um, and the the purpose of citing this building here is also really sh illustrating that doorway to learning. So this space does, is designed with generous or outdoor gathering and pre-function spaces, uh, which create an opportunity for connection to the community and also connection to nature. Another feature is a new 15,000 square foot restaurant and cafe space, which can serve the campus as well as the local Jefferson corridor and create a really vibrant uh, spot on campus that creates a lot of activity. And it's truly meant to be a home for innovation. So again, you can see how these collaboration spaces can work, connecting the indoors to the out, um, taking advantage of the site, as mentioned, both with massing, you can see the terraces occurring up above, the collabor collaboration space spaces happening both indoors and out. And you can see how that porosity extends into the ground floor levels of the buildings, um, trying to, this would help attract sort of the best tenants, as well as a space where students could potentially traverse through campus and um, have, make that connection to what's sort of happening um, on the indoors as well. Again, you can see how the entire site plan is designed to take advantage. We have used several um, different sustainability strategies, including an approach to natural ventilation over uh, around 50,000 square feet of outdoor terraces and bringing sort of the lobbies out into the community so that everyone can, can see that connection to the indoors. Um, this illustrates the to taking advantage of the topography with the um, Baldwin Hills uh, adjacent the stepping massing, kind of creating that green space along both the ground level as well as the terraces up above and creating these uh, private, more private collaboration spaces in addition to what we showed happening down at the lobbies below. And one approach that we took in addition to the way we, the buildings were sited is that every design move is really emphasizing that connection to nature for health and wellness. You can see the transparency created through the glazing. You can see the vistas created above and really a restorative landscape approach. 
This diagram illustrates a range of uh, strategies to make this the most wellness focused campus possible. One element is the 10100 trail, which is approximately half mile walking loop throughout the campus that could potentially connect um, to, to surrounding trails. And we also have taken approaches of green roofs, uh, solar ready, natural ventilation, as mentioned earlier, looking at how this can rest lightly on the land through the LED tiered rain gardens. Um, and really, this is an opportunity to restore a brownfield site. So you can see some of the highlighted strategies that we would be using here. And wanted to note that the location of the, the campus building on Jefferson and College, as mentioned, in the beginning is really to create, uh, it's a catalyst for job creation and internship opportunities. So it's that opportunity to mix uh, these different space, the buildings themselves, the offices, the parking um, with a very real life practical application for the, for the students at this uh, location of the building here. And you can also see kind of highlighted in the pink, the 10 100, uh, trail and how that weaves throughout the campus and also the addition of um, I think 380 trees to this site to really again restore that is that brownfield. Rob did you have any did you want to add anything <laughs> please? Yeah, yeah. No, just just to close it out and thanks Ashley for that for that overview I think as you can see our, our priorities here are certainly to create what we consider to be a world-class campus that is seemed in, in, integrated into the existing campus in a way that feels very natural, that works with the existing um, topography and landscaping to create what, what is really a, a best in class campus. And the new spaces that we would be providing, obviously a huge focus on sustainability, ESG, and creating those moments for students to be able to get access to opportunities, to jobs, to training, to learning, um, that I don't think they would be able to get without having this type uh, of a use uh, seamed into to the campus and access to, to those types of employees and those types of jobs. So um, we're thrilled about the opportunity to, to present these plans. We're really appreciative um, uh, of the opportunity. Look forward to this long-term partnership together in creating um, this really special campus. So thank you for the time this morning and we're here for any questions you have. Thank you so much, uh, Rob and Ashley. Um, uh, do any of the trustees have any questions um, on this presentation? Uh, do you want to ask now, or should we hold them to the end of all of them? And, and wanted to do it to do it, Trustee Bettis, right after each presentation, seeing that perhaps some of the presenters might, you know, want to go on with their day but i mean if you all if you think it'd be better to wait till the end i'm, I'm fine with that too sure um well, i could ask a couple now and then we'll see what we do in time afterwards so sure go for um, it. so uh first question is is um you know we, we do have our uh expo line station a bit away um some interest in terms of sort of the transportation friendliness um uh, of the kind of site that we have here. What 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 are you keeping in mind? I think it looks like there's a couple of stops or, I mean, there's a big garage up front, but certainly, um, but just wondering about, uh, you know, the other sort of transportation enabling qualities of, of, of this project. And then um, can you speak a bit about the kind of tenants you hope to um, uh, target for, for this site? I know the West side and certainly not too far away from us, we have, all kinds of everything from tech to um, biotech to uh, it's all coming in this area, but just, just, uh, just curious as to see about those two, two areas. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Great, great questions. Um, and maybe I'll, I'll, um, I'll, I'll address the second question first. And then we certainly thought a lot about your first question with respect to access and connectivity and connection to transit. So I'll have Ashley um, address that question, but from fr from um, the the profile of the of the of the user, we, we see this being a best in class entertainment media technology company. And yeah, we just finished um, Apple Media's headquarters building at eighty seven seventy seven Washington. There's there's clearly been a uh, a, a real push 
from entertainment media and technology into Culver City. What we see is a, is a tremendous um, imbalance between supply and demand. Uh, these are companies that have moved in and taken initial positions, um, but we think, you know, have demand over time for more to the extent that the right product exists. And we believe that this is that, that right product. Um, we thought very heavily around putting stages and production spaces on the site, but what we ultimately, you know, came to the conclusion of it was not the, the most dense use for the land. And we also see some significant headwinds coming in terms of demand for content creation, specifically the news around Netflix and stock price and those types of things continues to, you know, I think bolster our argument that um, this is this is a higher density use. Um, and this is one that we see could be a, a single that comes in into the entire campus, but it's also been designed to be, you know, a really best in class multi-tenant campus as well. So we think there's a lot of adaptability to the types of buildings um, and we can really attract a, a companies, high quality companies from a number of different industries. Ashley, do you want to touch sure. on the uh, connectivity yeah. question? Thanks, Rob. No, it's, it's such a good question. This, this site is so critical to its connections, both from, you can see we've given it thought and obviously would want to have many further conversations, but in terms of the, the automobile corridor, the need for loading and deliveries, and then as you, you mentioned, really connecting to the, the transit that exists, um, you can see sort of thinking about the, the bus stops, shuttle spots, stops and then perhaps you know very critically is how you know pedestrians might circulate as well as bicycle and micro mobility lanes knowing that's been a you know really critical push in Culver City um, so again we have given it a, a level of thought but think it's a really critical nature um, and then that is in part why we organized the site the way we did where we know we need to get you know, in and out of parking in a sort of efficient um, manner, but really wanted to, to emphasize this frontage on Jefferson Boulevard as well for the college and then that connection through, obviously. So um, hopefully that answers your question as at least a starting point. All right, any other questions? All right, all right. I guess we're gonna go on with the next presentation, Dr. Smith. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair Bella. Next up, we will have Hackman Capital Partners, Manhattan Beach Studios Group. All right, welcome. You go ahead and present. Good morning, members of the board, LACCD and West LA College Administrators, faculty and students. I'm Brian Glodney, Senior Vice President at Hackman Capital Partners. I'm very appreciative of the opportunity to share a creative approach and deep commitment to the students of LACCD. We have with us today our HCP and MBS team, but also our professional experts. I want to reiterate, we are not just developers, but we are doers, collaborators, operators, teachers, and mentors. We've been a part of this project through various iterations for the better part of seven years. But more than that, we've been in Culver City for nearly two decades. We have made it home to our headquarters, located right down the street with numerous successful projects built and underway. Today, we're going to highlight and further put spotlight on our approach to mentorship, job training, which Irene will share in greater detail. We're committed to a $2 million endowment to seed educational partnerships and job training and providing 40 internships annually. We're also here to showcase the strength of our creative and flexible campus design, working with our world-class team of architects and engineers. In addition, our opportunity with our neighboring 10150 building can offer in being a catalyst for the MPTP program immediately next door and in the near term, in addition to our other studios and active programs across all of Los Angeles. Paul Dana of SOM will walk you through our 10100 approach. Great, thank you, Brian, and good day, everyone. As I am sure you'll see from the ideas put in front of you today, your site presents a, a really amazing opportunity for West LA College and all of Culver City. Uh, that said, uh, it is not without its challenges uh, with its oil well its topography, as shown here in blue. These are all real challenges, uh, none of which can be overlooked uh, at this point in the process, uh, at least if you don't want surprises down the road. Uh, but to be positive, uh, it's directly adjacent to uh, 10100 Jefferson, uh, a site that is controlled by our team at Hackman. 
And having this parcel as a part of our plans, it not only gives us the ability to extend the revitalization of Jefferson, uh, but helps with phasing and relocation flexibility. Uh, as Brian noted, gives us the ability to jumpstart the project quickly, and it allows us to bring traffic in uh, from Jefferson uh, without having to move through our campus uh, directly. Uh, with that, let's jump to our plan, uh, a 400,000 square foot campus. Uh, we believe right-sized for this site uh, with office, production, retail, uh, and most importantly, the new West LA College building. Uh, the buildings straddle College Boulevard, creating a gateway experience for the larger West LA campus beyond. And then as the buildings uh, weave their way up the hill, the, they navigate those below ground constraints and they leverage the topography of the site uh, to create a series of terraces linked by pedestrian walks and quad spaces for working, meeting, or, or simply relaxing outdoors. Uh, while the plan uh, purposefully draws inspiration from uh, traditional academic campuses, it is very forward looking and thinking in its response to sustainability, carbon, mobility, wellness, uh, as the notes on this drawing describe. Uh, on Jefferson, uh, three creative office buildings define a new urban street wall, which is highlighted by the market building at the corner of Jefferson and College. And then along the southern edge, uh, a low slung parking structure provides uh, an effective buffer between the new campus and the development uh, to the south. Uh, this image describes the areas of each of the new buildings, uh, including the 27,000 square foot uh, West LA College building. Uh, this new focal point uh, for the campus uh, will provide state-of-the-art uh, facilities among them, uh, indoor and outdoor prop houses, uh, a creativity studies lab, a visual and special effects training space, uh, green screen training facilities, and then outdoor decks where students can study, socialize, and just take advantage of our Southern California climate. Uh, this next drawing is a cross-section of one of our office or flex buildings and its long span structural system. So this long span design allows us to accommodate everything from offices to sound stages. And it also gives us a way to navigate uh, those sewer easements using the long span system to span across them uh, as this image describes. So with this innovative structural approach, these buildings can accommodate office and production uses today uh, and, and other uses tomorrow. Uh, this cross-section looks at the market building and the indoor-outdoor space of the market hall. So this uh, open area galleria, it's, it's framed by two office buildings and a lightweight roof structure uh, beneath which food and beverage uses will create a, a really active pedestrian passage to the campus entry quad and drop off on the other side. And Trustee Veras, you asked about the mobility connections to transit. Well, this drop off would be uh, the hub for our on-site micro mobility center. And then this last image, uh, it depicts the market hall, uh, the rest of the projects, Jefferson frontage as it, it brings new energy to uh, the West LA campus entry uh, and then respectfully steps down uh, to meet the neighboring context. Uh, before I hand the floor over to Irene, uh, we'd like to share a short video. Uh, it depicts the qualities and life that this new campus will bring to the area uh, and the students and faculty of West LA College. Russell. Sure. I'll just stop and share to get the right screen. Here we go. So, Morning time, the campus is waking up. Uh, people are moving through the new gateway established by this series of buildings that make their way up the hillside. The buildings are important, but really the open spaces are the focus of the campus. Uh, open spaces within the campus and here on the edge, uh, the market hall that creates a great new urban connection from Jefferson into the central uh, and and uh, entry quad to the campus, uh, our drop-off center and mobility hub. Uh, the architecture is fresh, contemporary. The real highlight on the open spaces and landscaping that makes sense uh, these days with our water conditions. But the jewel of the project 
uh, focusing back there on the West LA College building, a really new uh, uh, technical center for the students, but also a, a social heart uh, for them in this area of campus. And here, the shots of the, uh, the office and production areas, showing the opportunities for spaces for individuals, large gatherings. Uh, and here we go back to Jefferson, uh, the project set in its new uh, location and bringing uh, a new level of energy and life to the district. Irene. Hi everyone, I'm Irene and thank you for this opportunity to speak about West LA College. Um, I just wanna start off by saying that at MBS and Hackman Capital Partners, we understand your mission when it comes to educating students and providing them with pathways to succeed and growing them professionally and uh, personally. We share these same values when it comes to our community outreach programs. We specifically work with community organizations and also nonprofits specifically targeting those that are from underrepresented, underrepresented groups and communities, specifically those that have been affected by homelessness or have been part of the foster care system. We work with these organizations to provide them with basic hands-on training and also networking opportunities. Our training programs are uh, taught by industry professionals and they are meant to be complementary to existing programs that are being offered by um, community colleges and schools and other community organizations. For example, previously within our LA programs, we have directed students and participants towards West LA College and also Hollywood CPR for those that have expressed that they want to continue learning about the industry. Um, we have also provided resources and assistance to various courses offered by Hollywood CPR. Um, I would like to mention that um, at MBS and Hackman Capital Partners, we are extremely dedicated to working with our communities. And uh, we believe that by combining our training programs with your educational programs, we will be able to create an exceptional um, unmatched education program for your students at West LA College and also for our communities. Um, in the spirit of West LA College and your motto, go West and go far, we believe that we can go further by working together. Um, at this moment, we would love to share with you all a video that highlights our passion and commitment to our community and also um, the various organizations we get to work with. So. Can, the, can the group hear the video? Um, we're, we're having a little trouble hearing it, but, um, maybe you want to reboot it. There you go. When you reshare your screen, there's an option on the lower left to share audio. You, you might want to try it again. Do you guys want to um, move on to questions instead? And then if it goes back on, maybe you could put it on or? Can one of you guys look at the tech people perhaps? It's very um, sure, I, I think that would be fine. We can, we can use the opportunity to, to reboot the, the audio. Absolutely. Okay. And you know, we're already uh, seeing one of the, the other videos. So yeah. And, and, <laughs> Why don't you guys also mute yourselves while you're trying to uh, fix that? Um, First, Ms. Ivella, we, we have just a, a conclusion slide. If we could just share that. Absolutely. Question and answers. Thank you. Appreciate okay. it. Okay, sure. Let's do that. Team, can we pull up that slide? Okay. Well, if you can imagine what we'd be talking about there, we'd be talking through our partnerships, our Changing Lenses program that we've built and invested in over the last handful of years. Um, it's tied to working with underrepresented communities across the globe at our local production studios to bring them into the fold, provide them pathways into the industry, provide that mentorship and training with direct professionals to allow them to build longstanding careers, high paying jobs and entry into the unions. Uh, we know there are high bars to get there, um, they are high, high entries 
um, to move through those. And so we've been working through this at our various studios over the years to do that in collaboration with other partners, not necessarily only working upon ourselves and with ourselves, but working with Streetlights, Good City Mentors, Women in Media. These are all groups that we've partnered with over the years to provide as many pathways into the industry as possible. We've got a tremendous track record uh, with students, um, adults, and other professionals as they're working into the industry. Um, Irene and the team uh, would be happy to answer any questions in detail since we don't have the video to share with you. Um, no, and, and by the way, I wanna say that you've really conveyed that um, through the, the presentation, your partnerships. So please rest assured that um, that's been conveyed. Okay. I, I, I absolutely, thank you, Brian, so much, Paul and the team. Um, what I do wanna do right now, because we are limited in time is go ahead and uh, go to our trustees. I do wanna remind the trustees that we might go a little bit over the 12th- Of Hackman Capital and MBS, we're very- Still very- Yeah. 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 Um, I, and like I said, I, I would like to remind the trustees that we might go a little bit above the 1215 um, end time, uh, only because we still have two more presentations to go. Um, so right now I'd like to uh, take uh, questions from the Board of Trustees. Thank you. Any questions? Go ahead and unmute yourself, trustees. Um, I trust you guys. <laughs> no, that was amazing. That presentation was amazing. That, there we go. We got someone. Uh, any other questions or comments? Um, I just I, I know we have a we have a time constraint here, but I'm just trying to visualize in my mind where I, what you showed us was on the Jefferson side, correct? I love that video that you showed, by the way. Trustee Hoffman, do you mean the West LA College facility? Yes. I mean, I thought you were on two sides. Um, Correct. So the, the West LA College facility you'll see is on the bottom left of the screen mm -hmm. to the east of College Boulevard. And so it has its own independent campus of sorts so that it could operate independent of the activities that were happening on the other side, the main portion of the property, but have direct connectivity and access across College Boulevard to participate in the activities, the landscape grounds and the programs that would be offered in the west portion of the campus. Okay, that was my question. So it was across College Boulevard where the, where the access. Correct. Okay. And Trustee Hoffman, if I may, uh, just a point of architectural interest, while the building is very much stitched together with the existing or with the, the proposed campus on the other side of college through the pedestrian walkways, through its architecture, its landscape, uh, it's positioned so that when one turns off of uh, Jefferson and starts to head towards the campus, it captures your visual terminus there. So it is front and center, uh, really the new gate piece to, uh, to the campus further up the road. Great, that's what I was trying to envision. So thank you, thank you so much. No more questions. Thank you, Trustee Hoffman. Uh, any other questions? Trustee Vela, I had a question. Trustee Vela. Um, thank you. Uh, and, and I know uh, this presentation, and, and this is without having seen the other two presentations in front of us, uh, this presentation has um, uh, production space as well. Um, a Packman Capital and MBS. Uh, so a couple of uh, uh, points of curiosity, and, and I know the state of California with their film and TV tax credit also has had some modifications uh, to include infrastructure and capital as well as sort of the intern um, diversity component. Um, can, uh, can you all at Hackman um, MBS talk about sort of your um, working history with the with the credit, working history with building um, out facilities with uh, the sort of uh, um, conditions that are called for out by the state. Because we'd obviously love to bring in additional resources to the table, I'm sure you would as well. Um, but this piece about um, uh, diversity that's so diligently being talked about in Sacramento um, to ensure that uh, essentially the, the Los Angeles looks like its workforce and that jobs uh, um, don't just become, you know, parent to sibling kind of experiences sometimes, which, which has been criticized in a few industries and this, this, this one has been one. Um, but can you talk about like, so your background and how you've dealt with those initiatives that have come up there, especially on the production side? Sure, Trustee, if I may, I'll just answer really quickly and then hand it off to one of my colleagues. But across this project and this partnership and all of our other projects in the industry, 
locally here, nationally and internationally. We try and ensure that our studios and the industry itself looks as diverse as the cities and populations that we work within. Uh, it's something that we strive to do. It's something that we establish very early on at the outset of our projects um, in any new opportunity. Uh, and to that end, I would hand it over to Rick Nelson, who might speak closer to the, the programs, the incentives as working with states um, and locales, um, studio to studio, project to project. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, all of our locations around the world are, are based on with local, uh, local crews, local staff, local management. Um, and in Los Angeles, it's no different. Uh, we've stressed very hard to do have, you know, diverse training programs, you know, with all of our facilities. And we, you know, we are continuing to do so. Um, the, as far as the tax credit, the new tax credit in California, um, it, it works as, as you build a new facility, um, and you need to have certain components uh, that apply to the, uh, for the productions, you know, and so, and you also need a long-term lease to be able to qualify for the tax credits. Uh, we have uh, great relationships. Uh, we have long-term leases at Raleigh Studios, um, Culver Studios, um, you know, uh, and, and several outside of Los Angeles, Silver Cup and, and Coffin Astoria. So we, we focus very much with the content providers uh, where they are uh, calling us because of our best locations around the world uh, when they have a project. So we really focus on, on um, you know, whatever their needs are. So here uh, we would be well positioned to bring in a longer term uh, partner uh, for a long uh, for a lease like that, uh, where we would be able to get and qualify for the incentives. So we actually have uh, a guy working for us right now. His name is Craig Hill, who is just focused on this. He used to run Fox Television, that is focused on bringing the incentives into into um, some of our facilities. We're looking at that from Manhattan Beach and, and others. So you but. This location and right in the heart of Culver, uh, Culver is ideal for that. You know, the productions will really gravitate to the site, um, and we'll be able to. Uh, I think we'll be able to uh, accommodate some type of a, a partnership with a production company that would qualify for the incentive. Uh, we feel pretty confident in that. And Trustee Veras, when we follow up with the presentation that will have the working video link in it, some of your questions will be further answered as a part yeah. of that. And thank you for that, Brian. And yeah, I, I do want to also mention that, you know, absolutely, if there are any follow up questions, please go ahead and uh, email them to the Chancellor and Dr. Smith, um, because they would be able to go back to our presenters and get you all. Is there anything else, Trustee Veras? No, nope. thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, thank you all so much, Hack Hackman Capital Partners. Uh, appreciate you all coming to present. I know you've worked really hard. Um, thank you, thanks thank you. again. And um, we're going to go ahead and uh, go on to our next presenter. But thank you all so much. I see your team out there. You guys did well, okay? <laughs> all right, everyone. Uh, uh, Dr. Smith, our next presenter. Yes, next up we have Hudson, Hudson Pacific Park uh, Properties. Um, are you all ready to go? Hudson, are you ready? We are, we are, we are ready. Thank you guys for the opportunity. Uh, my name is Chris Pearson, Senior Vice President of Development and Planning at Hudson Pacific Properties. Um, we are excited to present to you today. Um, just by way of background, Hudson Pacific is a publicly traded REIT. Uh, we own approximately 20 million square feet up and down the West Coast, headquartered here in Los Angeles, um, with a primary emphasis on creative office, and studio production space um, throughout the West Coast as well as, as, well as the world. Um, we're excited to be here today to present this project. You'll see um, and hear from Amy, who will show you two options um, as we approach this that really um, highlight our skill sets and our expertise. We've got a long history of uh, owning and operating and developing in, in Culver City. We have a long history of working with um, educational institutions. We have, we're existing ground lessees at Stanford University and are actually development consultants uh, for South Coast Orange County Community College District. Um, and so our, our experience on the public-private partnership side is, is vast. And we have a huge commitment to really making sure that um, the students, our partners, 
um, and and our tenants are all, benef are all benefiting from, from the work we do and really highlighting um, our emphasis around uh, equity and inclusion as we as we do projects. So I will now kick it to Amy Popowatana, um, our Vice President of Design and Development to present the project. Yeah, I would, uh, by the way, if your team could uh, uh, introduce themselves only because I do well, believe they all say Chris Pearson. It's that, something with the link, that? but you know, I just, right. maybe, maybe I'm just very vain about how I approach it. Hey, myself, I, I got you, you got to clone yourself sometimes. All right. <laughs> Uh, let's go. Thank you so much. Okay. Go ahead. Maybe we can't hear you. Yeah. Hi, my name is Drew Gordon. And uh, I think Chris had everything to do with the fact that our name, his name is on our boxes. But <laughs> regardless, um, I, I run California operations for Hudson Pacific Properties. I've been with the company for 11 years. And maybe just tack on a little bit of what Chris uh, spoke about, you know, as a, a public REIT, we are uh, long-term holders of, of real estate. And I think, um, you know, the, the importance of this project and, and the success of this project is to have a long-term partner as well. Um, we have many partnerships, both on the, on the private side. Chris mentioned our relationship with Stanford uh, University. We are the single largest um, um, occupier of, of uh, office space within Stanford's park. And all of those spaces are on ground leases. So we're obviously very comfortable with that um, as well. Um, but uh, we also, like I said, have uh, long-term ownership focus and, and our primary goal um, and what makes us, I think, very successful is the importance of relationships and collaborations. And I think at the end of the day, that's what will make this um, uh, project incredibly successful. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, you guys see our screen currently? Yes. Great, yes, great. we can see it. Great. Now I'm just going to Amy Popolatana next to me since the sound wasn't working. <laughs> right, yeah. It's a kind of a common thing now, technology issues. Uh, so I'm Amy Popolatana with um, Hudson Pacific. I'm the Vice President of Design, uh, part of the development team. Um, and thank you so much for having us be a part of this process. Um, we're really excited about the collaboration with the district and uh, West LA College. And I had the pleasure prior to coming to Hudson of working on multiple projects with LACCD. Um, so I'm really excited to potentially have the opportunity to collaborate with you guys once again. Um, uh, do we just wanna go into the, the deck? Okay, great. All right. So, um, you know, I think as, as we've all kind of noted, uh, 10100 Jefferson is really in a prime location to really take advantage of um, all of the activity, especially pertaining to entertainment um, that's happening all over Southern California. So your adjacency to Culver City and making this kind of an extension of the creative entertainment presence that's currently there um, is, is something that we think will benefit the one, the community, the students and your program and um, just uh, the school district in general. Um, and, you know, I think the way we approach the project is really, um, not about making determinations on what should be there, but really trying to come up with creative ideas and solutions for what is the potential. And so that's why when we move forward, we figured, you know, let's let's be collaborative with the studio or with the, the district and really try to come into um, this conversation with options, right? So in one sense, we came up with an option which is more studio production focused. And on the other side, we looked at um, a more creative office focus, um, all with the with the um, with the idea that you know, bringing you guys at bringing us to the table in a collaboration with the district uh, to really try to focus on what would be the most successful project solution. This is our first option, which is um, the more studio centric um, uh, project. The next slide. So in this option here, you know, we're really thinking about how do we make an offer of an innovative campus that is uh, that provides for production studio spaces and creative office. Obviously, as I mentioned before, it's really about extending the creative atmosphere of Culver City, um, kind of flanking that between the, the school community and the, the studio community at large at Culver City, um, as well as climate stewardship. You know, we here at Hudson Pacific believe very strongly in sustainability. We have um, very, very 
extensive goals in terms of lowering embodied carbon, um, really looking at all facets of sustainability to ensure that all of our projects meet like a high level of, um, of sustainability. So here, for example, it's a brownfield site. So we're looking at this as, you know, major incentives to really bring in a project um, that will better the environment and also um, really help to activate um, this part of Culver City. Uh, the other thing is really in terms of its, uh, our potential collaboration with uh, really students and how that really starts to engage our project engages with the, the school. It's you know having the opportunity to have students really be connected, physically adjacent to uh, a space where production is happening on a day-to-day -day basis so that we will have the opportunity for students to engage um, collectively alongside professionals. So the way that we um, kind of oriented the site is Jefferson Boulevard here, we've created this gateway um, to this creative office campus. Um, so we've run an office building along Jefferson Boulevard that's flanked with retail and amenities to really help engage the community, um, the school, as well as those that are working on the, on the campus. And, you know, we're trying to maximize the terracing site. So really thinking about how we've created tiers of um, areas uh, as we move uh, along the site. So in uh, this location here, we've provided for sound stages, four sound stages, 18,000 square feet each, um, including production office support spaces that kind of flank that, um, the stages. And in right behind is where we would have the back lot to, uh, for truck parking and access into the studio spaces. And as you go move further up on the terraces, we've really created this upper campus um, that will enjoy the terracing and views and really open up to creative and flexible office uh, workspaces, indoor and outdoor, again, maximizing and uh, on the Southern California weather um, to really start to engage and create as much flexibility in office space as possible. You know, after going through COVID, we know that tenants now really want ultimate flexibility when it comes to how they work and where they work. So we feel the vision for this campus is really starting to attain that. Um, and here you'll see there's a uh, you know, further amenitized space um, where we have retail and a food service that connects to the district space across the street, um, really starting to create that engagement with the school and our campus. This year is just a high level project summary. Um, so what you'll see in blue is the three office, uh, office buildings that get us to about um, uh, almost 400,000 square feet. Um, in pink, you will see the stages and the production spaces that are flanking alongside. We've got a parking garage that's nestled up onto uh, this corner. Um, and we thought, you know, long and hard about how we are engaging this site with the existing community. So really having um, the parking structure flank the residential to help mitigate some noise um, issues is uh, what we felt was very beneficial. And then up here in yellow is where we've got the 25,000 square foot district space. Uh, and again, really trying to maximize the physical proximity between the campus and the school um, and how that engagement will, will occur. Uh, we've uh, reached a ratio of about 2.9 per thousand parking uh, with the garage here, uh, as well as some additional parking under this building. This is just a view here that kind of looks at how the creative office will engage with the studios. Um, and for option two, which is again, primarily office focused development, we've got about 690,000 square feet of creative office that's um, spread along uh, the terracing site, um, as well as a parking garage that's a little bit larger um, to support the, the office space. Um, and really this idea of having this meandering um, outdoor space that connects all of the office buildings to create like a really cohesive campus. Once again, the district space up above here with you know, pedestrian access back and forth to the office uh, campus to really begin to further engage the students um, and just, you know, have them get, give them a viability of, uh, of being able to um, run course with the professionals in the industry. 
Uh, this is just a high level project summary again of the blue is showing the office buildings um, and they run between four and five stories tall. Um, and then you've got the parking garage, outdoor um, amenities um, and the district space. Here are just some eye level views of the campus. Um, as you can see the connection to the district space uh, indoor and outdoor flexible um, office uh, work areas um, and then really thinking about you know materiality and having um, just this outdoor engagement so that you know there's there's a lot of ability for students and the professionals to really um, have flexibility. Here's just a view from the corner of Jefferson and College, um, where you can see there will be, you know, solar panels, um, potential green roof gardens, terraces, um, maximizing the views out of the office uh, to overlooking um, Jefferson Boulevard and the district space um, just over to the left. This is just a drop-off area. Again, how we would engage professionals with students. Um, and again, integral to uh, the campus, we really start to create a gateway facility that pairs with the Watson Center um, just further up College Boulevard. Um, and this is just to give um, a sensibility to what we're thinking about the, this, the district space. And again, this is kind of a first um, thought and we would like to work in conjunction with the, with the school to really fine tune the programming and the spaces. But, um, you'd have, you know, a very multifunctional lobby, uh, the creative studies lab upstairs um, on the ground level would be the prop house um, and then an area outside uh, to really create um, um, space for the prop yard. So, I mean, obviously we've, we've been successful over, over the years in developing here in Los Angeles, uh, developing many millions of square feet over the last eight years uh, here at Hudson Pacific. Um, but it's really our, our commitment to, to partnership with LACCD as well as the communities that we do business in. Um, and one of, that, one of those partnerships that we would bring to uh, LACCD is we have an existing relationship with Ghetto Film School. Um, they are a nonprofit focused on training and uh, developing underrepresented uh, students to be sort of uh, in front of the screen uh, talent, directors, producers, providing a unique opportunity to diversify the industry. Um, we have a relationship with Latino Theater Con uh, Conservancy, really working with them as they have set designers and directors, really working with them directly to understand how we can get below the line jobs. How do we make sure that, that, this, that, that our jobs that are on site are as diverse and as reflective as LA as possible? So they would be two of our service providers that we would help fund seed assets to, to ensure that they're actually outreach to LACCD students, and building out programmatic um, uh, uh, focuses on production uh, activities here in Los Angeles. Another big thing that we do at most of our projects is incorporating public art. Um, every project we've built over the last eight years has had a strong component of public art. We think this is a unique opportunity to engage with students at LACCD on the creative side, provide them an opportunity to do some of the public art that we would have on site. This also obviously is a, is a way for them to generate some, some income for themselves. Uh, a big focus of our creative arts program has been on um, diversity. In Vancouver, we have all of our public art done by indigenous artists here in Los Angeles. Um, during COVID, we launched a $750,000 uh, Vibrant Cities grant focused on POC and LGBTQ artists to ensure that they could stay in Los Angeles and survive during a, a downtime in the industry. And last but not least, is really looking at career pathways and internship opportunities. We have longstanding relationships with our tenants, Netflix, Apple, HBO, Disney, making sure that as we're training the students, they're getting connected to career opportunities with our tenants. They're getting connected with career opportunities with us. But we also see a unique opportunity to leverage what we're doing on site. Um, West LA, maybe have a focus on production and entertainment, but LACCD as a whole has so many pathways that can benefit from a project at 10100 Jefferson. So maybe it's partnering with LA Trade Tech and the construction maintenance and utilities pathway to ensure that we're getting some students from there on site and working with the tradesmen that we bring on site. Maybe it's bringing the culinary arts from LA Trade Tech to, to really staff and work through our, our retail and, and food service opportunities on site. We see this as a unique uh, approach to our project to really engage not just 
West LA students, but the, the district as a whole to make sure students have an opportunity to participate um, and grow their careers and professional endeavors, as well as obviously uh, generate some revenue for themselves as they continue to work through their, their educational components. Um, thank you guys. And if there's any questions, we'd be happy to take them. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Pearson. Um, and we really appreciate your all your presentation. At this time, um, are there any trustees that would have any questions um, for our presenters? Go ahead and unmute yourself. Thank you. Just you know. Absolutely, Trustee Bettis, go for it. Yeah. I don't have to go first, but put me on the list if you like. And if there's nobody no. right now, I'll jump in. I'm telling you, just please go for it. Okay, sounds good. Uh, thank you, Mr. Pearson and your team. Uh, uh, Mr. Pearson times five here. Um, uh, the the uh, option uh, um, one and two here, can you, can you talk about the factors that would help determine which option moves forward? Um, because, you know, to be honest, there's a little bit of your option that looks like our first presenter and a little bit of your other option that looks like our second presenter. Um, so, um, so, but can you talk through the sort of mindset and the process and, um, and how we should, you know, take the fact that it's a flexible two option piece, um, into consideration as, as the deliberation takes place throughout the district here? Well, I think you've heard, um, from both of our presenters, it's an evolving market um, in an evolving economy right now, um, where production and content creation um, has historically been on the uptick. There's obviously been some, some downward uh, momentum based on Netflix and others. Um, and then obviously just the return to work has been an uh, eternal question on, on the office market. I think what our proposal presents is an opportunity to be flexible, to ensure that you get a project that's built that doesn't necessarily have to be tied to any one industry. We can, because of our success on the studio side and our success on the office side, we're able to do both very effectively. We have the relationships with the tenants um, that will allow us to lease this site up um, and deliver a, a class A facility um, on the district's property. So I think the way you should look at it is you're getting a world-class studio developer, you're getting a world-class office developer who has the relationships and the business acumen to make the right decision to deliver you guys a product that's gonna be impactful and long lasting um, for the district. Well, I guess let me, let me drive down the question a little bit deeper. Um, when do you think is the moment that that decision needs to be made? Because I think if you go down one path, it's a little hard to convert to the other. Um, but what, what are the sort of um, uh, measuring timetables? Is it, is it what's happening in the market? Is it, um, you know, honestly, pre-COVID, when this project first got off the ground, we heard plenty about the lack of studio space in Los Angeles. And certainly I think we can all sort of read the trade publications and see um, uh, sort of what impacts here, but, but just to get a sense as to what marks the window, because I think evaluating, we, we have a resolution that sort of really talks about supporting the school and film and TV. Um, but then there's also based on these kinds of proposals, um, you know, there's a revenue generation that actually is obviously very helpful in, 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 in the conversation and, and, and pathways for our students in the future. But, but I just want to get a sense as to what do you think would be trigger points that would cause a, a one direction versus the other? Is it a few years in? So you take a measure of the where, market? Where we what? sit today, uh, Trustee Veras, is it's, it's our, and then you can see it through our internship opportunities and how we talk about some of our work development program, workforce development programs. We believe and we strongly believe that this site would, would do well as a production facility. Um, obviously the recent uptick in some of the news around the trades has provided just a, a second to pause and have a, have a discussion about that. But it's still our intent and our belief that this location, um, that Culver City will be um, a desirable location for production facilities. So just as a, as a, we're not playing the fence here. I think it's our goal to develop stages and office that support that. Um, but we did want to provide the opportunity to have some flexibility, primarily because the market does change. And this project is slated to deliver later than, than other projects that are on the horizon. We've commissioned a study uh, internally, uh, spent a million dollars to really look at what um, capacity will be in this market and other markets throughout the world. So we have a strong understanding of where the winds are blowing on content creation and, and how many stages will be necessary. Um, and then we think at that point, really, it's going to be flight to quality if there's ever overabundance. 
And this, this studio and this location will be of the highest quality. So that's kind of how we sit today. Unless there's a um, massive drop off in, in content uh, creation over the next three to four years, trust me, Barris, I, I would say we are headed down the path of, of a production studio. Okay, super helpful, thank you. Thank you so much, that was very helpful. Um, any other questions from our trustees? Any other questions? I just want to um, just reiterate again, thank you, thank you so much for your presentation, for taking the time. Um, thank everyone at Hudson Pacific. I know you all have been very engaged. I'm happy to see you have some of the folks that um, have spent time with the district. Um, and we're really, really appreciative that you took the time and uh, come and present to us. Um, again, thank you all uh, for your presentation. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Chris. And Chris, 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 and Chris. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys so much. All right. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Um, and, you know, again, thank you, trustees, for your patience. I know that I am going a little bit over time, um, but I do want to thank you uh, for your participation again. Um, I think we're up to our final presentation, Dr. Smith. Yes, we oh, are. Go ahead and present it. Thank you. Great. The final presentation will uh, be delivered by the Low team. And now we'll transition that over to Tom Wolf and his team. Thank you. Terrific. Uh, thank you all. Good afternoon, uh, board members, uh, chancellor, and, and district staff members. Uh, I am Tom Wolf. I am executive vice president here with Lowe. I lead our work in the Los Angeles region here in our, in our home market. Um, we're pleased to have the opportunity to meet with you today and share our vision and passion in response to the 10100 Jefferson RFP. As it's been mentioned before, it's certainly been a lengthy process, you know, dating back to 2015. And I can assure you that we're just as committed now uh, as we were then. Um, we've been asked to provide you with the specific information regarding uh, the development program, as well as our opportunities for uh, enhancement and student success uh, with the district and with West College. So we'll cover those. And there's obviously other components of our proposal that uh, the evaluation committee and the staff uh, have reviewed directly. It's important to start with Lowe's vision, um, which we note here that we build value in real estate for those we serve by creating innovative and lasting environments and meaningful experiences that connect people in place. This is critical to all that we do. And it's even more exciting right now because we're celebrating our 50th anniversary uh, of our firm. Um, we're privately held. We were founded here in Los Angeles. We're based in Los Angeles and it's our home. And I'm proud to say I've built my career here with Lowe for the past 28 years. Um, being that it's our home, it's important that we do it correctly. Um, we're not short-term owners um, and we wanna make sure that we're building these lasting environments and meaningful places in our communities that connect us for many years to come. We've also had the great opportunity to do that most recently in Culver City, which I'll speak to briefly as we talk about the program. As we talk uh, in, in our work with, uh, with partners, our first priority with any work we do is to understand our partners' goals and objectives and make sure that we're aligned on those and meeting those and, and actually exceeding those. So just as a reminder, these were the objectives that were set out by the district through the RFP process, providing the space for West for the motion picture and television program, maximizing the financial uh, value to the district for a long-term revenue stream, which we would do, um, creating exemplary and market responsive functional properties, uh, which are critical to the overall success as a development program that's aspirational, but is really achievable. And, and that's something that's important to pay attention to here. This is a discretionary process for entitlements that needs to be carried through the city of Culver City. And although it has to fall under the DSA requirements as you typically are familiar with, with the district properties, and this would too, it still has to go through a, a separate jurisdictional approval. And it's important that the product meets those requirements as well and is actually achievable for that. Um, our successful implementation of that entitlement and development and leasing strategy, which I think we can show uh, our prior experience with public-private partnerships with a number of uh, districts, uh, as well as with uh, the University of California system on multiple ground leases uh, that we've done in a public-private uh, scenario. Um, and then finally, the continued collaboration with the district and West to enhance student success, which we'll cover here as well. 
In terms of the development vision, our development vision is for a vibrant and experiential campus. It's an environment for both office use and for the West College community. It's responsive to the community and the neighborhood context and will enhance the front door entry uh, to the West campus. Our concept includes a, uh, a combination of next generation flexible office space in multiple buildings that are responsive to the California climate and the environment. We're committed to sustainability and working with our, our design teams and contractor uh, with their timber lab to conceive of wood structures that are renewable and tactile. And most important is market responsive vision and concept that aligns directly with the potential tenants and companies we wish to attract to the property. And finally, it's that concept which we have confidence in can be approved through the entitlement process with the local city. The proposed development program consists of seven buildings in a low rise campus for the office, media, technology, entertainment, and creative uses. It's just under 360,000 square feet in three and four story buildings within the maximum Culver City height limits of 56 feet. It provides flexibility of buildings and floor plate sizes of anywhere from 10,000 to 60,000 square feet, as well as opportunities for multiple users or single campus users or single building users for that matter. We also have a focus on the individual identity and access with direct access for tenants into and out of the buildings as opposed to going through uh, a dedicated central lobbies. And the buildings are focused on the climate and sustainability with indoor outdoor spaces, operable windows, balconies with direct access, and they're clustered around outdoor landscape spaces. The program we have is market responsive and is driven by the continued growth within the region by technology, entertainment, media, and the creative industries. There's over 1 million employees within the creative sectors throughout the Los Angeles region. And Culver City has seen the tremendous demand from folks like Amazon, Apple, Warner Media, HBO, and the Jefferson Corridor continues to attract tenants from Playa Vista to Culver City, um, those such as Facebook and Meta, Google, Microsoft, and Nike. We also believe there is an opportunity here for biotechnology as well mm -hmm. and can capture this demand in the flexible multi-building low-rise campus. There's also a focus on health and wellness um, with the timber buildings and the indoor-outdoor spaces and access to the environmental space. And the site plan is focused and organized to address the constraints of the existing infrastructure and the easements on the site. It's been mentioned before about the sewer easements, the storm drain easements, the oil wells. All of these are important to take into consideration such that you have an achievable program. Um, I will say we've had direct experience um, working with CalGEM, the former Dogger agency, uh, with the closure of existing oil wells. So we're not bashful about uh, working with them to make sure that we're in compliance and can actually construct properties surrounding and within former oil well fields. Um, the property also takes advantage with the design of the advantage of the elevation and the views as it steps up College Boulevard and provides for the multiple outdoor spaces of courtyards for the users, the students and the guests, and also addresses the neighborhood concerns with landscape buffers, noise and access. Parking is provided on site, both on the surface as well as in a consolidated parking structure located away from College Boulevard. Our buildings are conceived to be constructed with an innovative mass timber design. At least it's innovative for California. It's been done in other parts of, of the world and other parts of the country, but California is still on the early stages of this. We believe this provides for a unique, warm and sustainable element to attract the creative culture and the businesses in the market. It's primarily three and four story buildings with large floor plates and high ceilings. And it's still meeting again within that height limit requirement within the city. The exterior materials we conceive of are timeless and durable. Um, and all of those would be meeting the DSA requirements uh, as well. The outdoor environment is a series of landscape courtyards and a central programmed park area, which are contemplated. This provides direct access to all the users with shade and access for health and wellness opportunities for both air and water features. The tenants will have direct access to the patios and balcony access from buildings and sustainable features include permeable paving, promoting water conservation, groundwater filtering and recharge throughout the site. As it relates to the, to the district space in collaboration with West, 
There's the 25,000 square foot facility, 20,000 square feet of indoor space and 5,000 square feet of outdoor space for the motion picture and television production program. This is on the east side of College Boulevard adjoining uh, the primary portion of the site. It includes the educational space for the training in the visual and special effects and virtual reality fields, as well as the green screen space for the new technologies and the creative studies lab in direct alignment with the creative content industries in Culver City and LA. It also includes the prop house, both for indoor and outdoor space of prop management and training and instruction and inventory. In addition to the space itself for West, Lowe has a focus of, of looking to have a hands-on approach with our collaboration with our partners. And this is no exception here with the district and with West. We haven't yet had the opportunity to speak directly with the staff and the students um, at West, but as we look at this, at least initially, we think there's a threefold approach to enhancing economic su success, and this is what we've proposed in our response. It's a combination of training and education, um, and within that, we believe at a minimum there can be a real estate case study of this particular project, which I think could be a great learning experience for many of those in the real estate fields um, at West. We've identified at least six courses at West in both the real estate and the hospitality fields where Lowe and our affiliate through Coral Tree Hospitality would provide guest lecture opportunities on a regular basis for a number of coursework programs in collaboration with the staff and the educators um, to enhance the student knowledge. And third, we, with that, we also believe there's opportunity to engage with the students regarding membership and education in a variety of industry associations that we're actively involved in, namely NAOP, the Commercial Development Association that provides training and education, as well as the American uh, Housing and Lodging Association for student membership training and certificate programs. We would propose to provide student memberships for those interested in these associations and give them opportunities to enhance their educational experience and interact with professionals in these fields. The second component um, are opportunities for internships. Um, and that would be collaboration with the West Career Center. Through the construction and development period here, we would include at least one intern on our team from West that would be involved in the process while we go through this development and construction process. In addition, our hotel development, uh, hotel operations company through Coral Tree will provide ongoing opportunities for dozens of possible intern positions, both here in Los Angeles and around the country. And then future companies that will be on site within the property will be coordinating with them with their opportunities for the West Career Center to engage and create additional opportunities for internships and training programs. And then the continued association organization events that we believe can be organized on site at West um, and also give advantage to the students to uh, engage with professionals in the industry. All of these things, the training and education, the opportunities for internships lead to the third point, which is jobs. It's the preparation for these jobs that are critical for those to get out in the work field. And that's the ultimate objective of the student enhancement strategies and the collaboration. Fortunately, we have a direct example of the success of that with the opening of our hotel, the Shea, in Culver City, which we completed last fall. We had the opportunity to work with the West Career Center with the Hospitality Certificate Program and actually have hired four new full-time West student employees that are working with our hotel program. It's a great success story and we hope that we could provide more of those in the future. We've assembled a robust and high quality experienced team of professionals that have committed uh, considerable time and resources to prepare for this and we're prepared to move forward uh, swiftly in order to move uh, into the process on the development. As we close, I wanted to share just an example of Ivy Station, which is the most recent development we've completed in Culver City. We had direct experience here for over 10 years, carrying this through a very similar entitlement process that we would have to do with 10100 Jefferson. It's a zone change to a planned development zoning, fitting within the CEQA confines of the requirements and also addressing uh, public-private features with city and metro uh, pieces and multiple stakeholders and community groups. Again, it's important to have an achievable strategy and deliver on that commitment, which we've been able to do here uh, with Ivy Station. And then finally, as we close out, just a reminder, uh, re a conclusion that we're committed to exceeding the district and west objectives 
by providing that space for the motion picture and television program, the collaboration to enhance student success with the training, the education, internships, and jobs, uh, the financial results to the district with a re market responsive and achievable plan for entitlement approvals, um, and, the, and a proven uh, experience with history of public-private partnerships. I'd mentioned our work with the UC Regents. We've also done work with the San Diego Community College District on a ground lease program, as well as the Berea Olinda Unified School District. We strive and, and we shine in complex development uh, projects. That's really where we hit our stride. And this is uh, exactly one of those in terms of the complexity for uh, approvals process and community outreach and working with the district and the staff to also incorporate the student success. And again, we have the highly experienced team and committed professionals, as well as our local market focus. It's our backyard, it's our home. We wanna make sure that we're doing this right. And we look forward to working with you and West in close collaboration in the future. Thank you for the time. Thank you so much, Mr. Wolf. Uh, really appreciate uh, your presentation. And thank you again for joining us and presenting today. And thank you to all your team. And thank you to Lo as well. Thank you all so much. Um, at this time, are there any questions from our trustees? Just go ahead and feel free to ask your questions. Thank you. Um, Mr. Wolf, uh, can I ask a quick question in terms of uh, one of the slides you mentioned going through zone changes? Um, and is is that, um, as I understand, I know it's been years now since Culver City's done it, and uh, I always appreciate your diligence and your presentations. But uh, the city did do a specific plan a few years back. Is is the specific plan that they put in place in this quarter not sufficient that you would they would require that or is there a reason why you're not going with the specific plan exactly and looking towards uh, some some changes? Um, in our in our assessment and our review with the Culver City uh, zoning, it's currently zoned industrial general. Um, it only permits a 43 foot height limit currently um, and a lower density. I don't believe there's a specific plan in place that would permit the proposed development that we're proposing, likely nor any of those that others are proposing either. Um, the concept that we'd responded to believes that we'd have to go through a planned development zone process. Basically, you'd be creating uh, a special planned development zoning for the site itself um, and its proposed uses. Okay. Well, well, thank you. I appreciate that. I might be under a different understanding um, because of presentations that the Culver City officials have made in the past. Um, so whether they didn't sort of complete through or something changed. I am not immune to know that there is change in leadership in local government as well uh, that sometimes turns things. But uh, but Dr. Smith, it would be great if we can sort of hear the feedback from the local level, because I think one part of the component is, although it's our, it's our property, I think we've always made an effort um, to collaborate closely with the city uh, and to have things that work for both entities. So, um, so thank you for that. And thank you for the explanation there. Thank you, Trustee Vettis. Any other questions? All right. Any other questions? I, all right. Well, Tom, you only got one question, uh, but but it's a good one. And we'll definitely follow up and really, again, appreciate your team and yourself being here. And thank you so much for your presentation. Um, Very good. Thank this, you for your time. Absolutely. At this time, again, I want to thank all of the presenters today. Um, you know, we've had a very robust meeting, um, and I want to thank all the trustees as well for hanging in there. Thank you so much. Um, and I know that, again, we, we do have the ability uh, uh, to go ahead and ask follow-up questions over to Dr. Smith and the Chancellor um, about these presentations. And there, um, as we spoke earlier, uh, today was not an action uh, meeting. Instead, we were i um, going to uh, look and hear the presentations and then recommendations will go to the board in the future. Dr. Smith, do you want to close us out, and Chancellor? Excuse me, before we adjourn, um, <clears throat> are you able to hear us? Yes. Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> that video was a, a fairly key portion of our, uh, of our, our presentation. So we have shared that with the city. We implore you to watch it, but if I could just uh, take a moment to share what the the essence of that video was, it's our relationship with the community, all the, all the programs that we work on, changing lenses, illumination, streetlights, as well as the programs MBSU, MBSI, 
it's really important to us, not just to be a part of this project, but to give back to the community as we have in all of our other projects. So thank you. For yeah, and, and as I mentioned, I think you definitely conveyed that. Um, and uh, Dr. Smith, if, if you don't mind, just going ahead and following up with, um, with them. And, and if they would like to send a link to their video, uh, I'll leave that up to you, Dr. Smith. Thank you again. Thank you to everyone. Um, I'm going to have to go ahead and move on the, to, to through the agenda. Item C3 is just to receive and file of active construction projects. Um, you can actually have access to it online on board docs. Um, and uh, again, this is the one we receive and file. There is no action on that. Um, and then again, we are now taking requests to address the Board of Trustees regarding matters not on the agenda. Is there anything, Lupe? No, sir. No one signed up. All right. If there's no ob objection, we're adjourned for today's Committee of the Whole. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you for your patience. Thank you.